everybody this is clint locklear from the farmer's grove and we happen to be on the farmer's grove and uh i'm sure when you're looking at what you're looking at on your screen right now that's not going to seem all that impressive whatsoever it's uh it's just a field right i mean that's kind of what it is this yesterday was this that ladies and gentlemen is just naturally where it grows up in this field and that's as high as my neck i'm six foot two this is what the other side looks like now we keep this mow this is an access to uh that we're gonna make sure is really nice so that part in the middle if we ever do weddings we're keeping that open and you can see just how thick 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 bam i have no idea how many tons of biomass that i dropped onto this field from doing this that is what the whole field looked. this is not a hedgerow that's what this whole field looked like now i was using that cover cropper that i showed you i was pulling it with a jeep uh it is if it's strictly strictly grass like i said before it's not going to be the you know it's not going to do this per se even though there's a whole lot of grass it, it definitely uh got laid down this should have some gloves on to figure out the sun okay this is my hand it's up to that knuckle that is a solid probably four four and a half inches of mulch dropped on this field now th this part of the field here if, if you look out you'll see the the flags kind of blowing in the wind it's like a thomas black and we've got some specialty mulberries and pawpaws and stuff like that this is the part of the field we're going to be extending over this way uh this year this part of the field is what we planted this year you can see all the flags now with the cover crop crimper i'm not going to be able to like really do fine-tuned work this anatolova apple but i'll be able to clear this little three foot section all the way down through here in about 10 minutes with a scythe and then we go down and here is a thornless honeysuckle that i've got mulched in with a scythe i'll clear this so it's all going to look nice and good here's some rows of sharon that i propagated from cuttings another rose of sharon another antelope apple rose of sharon that is wow that's already doubled in size it's another honey a thornless honey uh not honeysuckle honey locust so th this is what this looks like now and then right where you can see the where it's thick in the middle that's where the trees are at i'm just gonna i'm gonna go ahead and throw seeds in this just kind of like natural farming i'm gonna scythe it down and i'm gonna try to get some buckwheat started so I can start the succession of the cover crops in between these trees. And that way I can completely knock the grass out of doing this. But I just want to show you what it looks like with a cover crop crimper, not a bush hog, not using really, I'm not, you know, having to go buy a $25,000 or $30,000 tractor with another implement and figure out how to maintain all that. That's my tractor right there uh i have been looking at getting one of the john deere gator utility vehicles which i think would pull the cover crop crimper if that's the case it's just going to get lower and lower use and energy but i just wanted to show what this was because we got some rain coming in this week and it all that moisture is going to flow down through this four inches of biomass that's laid on top of the ground and it's not going to be able to evaporate in the summer like it normally does like it would if it was left like this even though there's some good shade there this will keep it uh the soil life and the worms a lot happier now one thing i will say after doing this and after thinking about this when i do the rest of the fields this way i think what i'm going to do just for the the natural insect life here is i may like have a two or a uh, couple of lanes that are, are cover crop down leave a strip a couple of down leave a strip that way on this long uh, 1300 foot section here it will it will i'll have i'll leave strips in here for the insects and stuff like that 
still get plenty of soil life built up. That's one of those things after you do it and you kind of look at it and you go, yeah, I think I can do a better job by, by leaving some natural strips in here. Next year I can let the ones that uh, I didn't cover crop or, or cover crop crimper down. I'll let those grow up naturally and drop the, the mulch and the ones that were left alone this year. So that's, you just learn as you go when you're doing stuff like this because a bigger scale is definitely something that uh, is very different when it comes to uh, figuring out how to apply the principles of, of permaculture and soil life. There again, you can see how high all that was and then this it's laid down some of this is popping back up a little bit where it was green and young that's okay i still got four inches of mulch under there uh this is not for this is just for building soil not really for having people out here right now so it's doing what it's supposed to do and i hope y'all are doing what you need to do on your own systems to have a better future